While some of Wall Street's most sophisticated traders are still licking their wounds from the unprecedented economic and market disruption caused by the coronavirus, an average investor sitting in the most basic 60-40ths portfolio of stocks and bonds just broke even. The traditional 60-40ths portfolio, which invests 60% in the S&P 500 and the rest in the benchmark treasuries, wiped out its 2020 loss after equities' massive comeback from this historic coronavirus sell-off. The Vanguard Balanced Index Fund, which mirrors the 60-40ths rule, turned positive on the year in the previous session and rose another 0.8% Thursday. The 60-40ths split is typically a rule of thumb for retirement allocation for its low volatility and steady income. It offers more exposure to higher yielding stocks while having a buffer from low-risk fixed income investments when things go south. This strategy has worked better this year than simply owning the S&P 500, which is still down 3.6%. Many on Wall Street were caught off guard by the sheer magnitude and speed of the coronavirus sell-off and subsequent comeback. The S&P 500 tumbled more than 30% from its record high in the span of a few weeks, suffering the fastest bear market on record. Now as the economy started to emerge from the pandemic, stocks are roaring back sharply as investors bet on a swift economic recovery. The S&P 500 just pulled off its greatest 50 rally in history, jumping 37% over the period. The 60-40th strategy was not immune to the deep stock route. When the pandemic roiled financial markets in March, the balanced fund dropped more than 20% from its peak in February, only the fourth time since World War II that it declined 20% or greater from a record. Some analysts have long argued the 60-40ths portfolio has lost its mojo due to historic low bond yields. As interest rates hit rock bottom, there's little room for bond prices to appreciate to mitigate losses on the equity side, they argued. Goldman Sachs previously said the classic 60-40ths rule is broken as the bank believes bond yields would need to turn deeply negative to buffer large losses in equities. After hovering around just 1.75% in the past year, the 10-year Treasury yield dropped below 1% in March, hitting an all-time low of 0.318% and boosting prices which move inversely to yields. The move was in part due to the Federal Reserve's unprecedented easing measures. It was trading around 0.8% Thursday. With yields low or negative, I think it strains how much investors should allocate to this space," Jim Powelson, chief investment strategist at the Leuthold Group. The question is not whether investors should adopt or rather whether much of the traditional fixed income arena is still a viable alternative. Investors may opt to hold high-quality, high-dividend-paying stocks as a surrogate for bonds, going forward, Powelson said. Over a two-year period, the 60-40ths portfolio matched the S&P 500 performance, returning about 10%.